Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. So a while back, be actually before Christmas, Matt Granger got in contact with me and wanted to have a discussion, just kind of conversation about computers. Um, he was thinking about getting something different. And I guess you'd seen my video where I built my own computer and other people told him to uh, contact me. And I've been following his channel for a couple of years. Um, he's got like, I, I really enjoy when he does series like he compared, I think, the Nikon, the Canon, the Sigma, the Tamron 70 to 200s, um, and a whole series of videos, um, real in depth, and which I really enjoyed. So, if you know, get a chance, definitely check out his channel. I'll link it um, below. So, we just wanted to have a conversation about computers. Um, we, he put it on his channel already. Um, it's about 45 minutes long. I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I, what I'd do is, is break it up in parts that may be of maybe interest to you guys. And the first thing that might be of interest to you guys is uh, this first conversation about uh, Macintosh uh, computers and where I am with those computers right now. I'll use, you know, in fact, I was thinking about today, in our house, we've got four iPhones, we've got an iPad, and we've got maybe three Windows machines. So really, in, in our household, it's, you know, if you think about an iPhone as being a computer, which it really is, we're outnumbered in our house in terms of Apple. But um, it was funny, I went to the store, the Apple store at the mall, and because um, I returned this other laptop, which is really noisy, performed awesome, but it was just too noisy to use. Um, I was in there and I was kind of trying to holding up the MacBook Pros and we're trying to render something and listen. I'm like, I can't hear anything. This thing sounds really quiet. Um, so I'm actually thinking about um, getting either a MacBook Pro okay. um, because it's so quiet um, and I, I need that. Um, or my wife was with me and she, she was looking over at the iMacs with the big, what, third? 30 inch display. She's like, Oh, I want that. <laughs> so actually I might be getting that for, for Christmas, um, to clean up the mess that we have over on where, where she has her computer setting. So we so might become even more and more. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm going to think about picking it up tomorrow, yeah, right. but, um, I'm not, I, it's just a tool. That's all it is. And, um, you know, with this new MacBook. Pro coming out. We we, just, we both just watched this video by David Pierce over at The Verge. It was a great. Not, not the MacBook Pro, just the. Oh, the thank you. It's the, you. the. Yeah, I'm not good on the Apple terminology yet. Sorry, but uh, the the cylinder trash can type thing. And uh, what's really interesting about that video is he talks about how it's not really optimized for Premiere Pro, which is what I use. Um, it works. At, apparently extremely awesome what do you say <laughs> he rendered a 30 second clip in two seconds on that thing yeah, which is amazing <laughs> <laughs> that was insane but so it's it sounds like it's optimized for final cut x yeah it, you got to correct me if i say something wrong here and but in terms of uh premiere it's the drivers and stuff are not or maybe optimized yet, and which is odd because I don't know if you follow Al Mooney, but he's like the lead guy there over at Adobe for their video product line, like After Effects and Premiere Pro and that kind of stuff, I believe. And I could have sworn I heard him on a podcast recently, and he said that, you know, we're working close with Apple and this new computer that's coming out, we're going to try to make it optimized. But maybe I heard that wrong because apparently it's not optimized yet. So well, I'm sure it will get some. not out for two months right so oh really yeah i think oh. the actual pro doesn't go on sale till february it's just available uh, for order uh, now so maybe you know they'll have their update for their software then okay gotcha so have you actually used final cut at all other than today sound testing the <laughs> the laptop <laughs> no just uh i've watched lots of tutorials i know a lot of people that use it but and i know there's a big discussion went on many years ago when they released Final Cut X and there was a big backlash and a lot of people went over to Premiere. Um, uh, but I've pet, I'm hearing this movement of people moving back because, um, especially with this new computer coming out, I would imagine a lot of people move back because it is so heavily optimized for this brand new computer. Because um, they were running four, four Red Epic, I believe, 4K streams yep. at the same time. And he said barely dropping a frame or two, which is pretty awesome because my machine that I built, which I don't know if you want to talk about, but I, I, I built it 10 months ago. So a lot of it's already out of date, but, um, I bought it or, or purchased all the parts for $2,300, $2,400. And I've added an SSD for my primary, it's a gigabyte, uh, SSD drive. Uh, so it's really right now. It's probably around the $3,000 mark. Um, sorry, a gigabyte, and is that the brand? Or? I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, uh, a terabyte, ah. a terabyte SSD right. drive. Yeah, yeah. I did say that wrong. Um, and it can play back a 5K Red Epic uh, file raw with not dropping any frames. But I've never tried to do four at the same time. That that seemed amazing. Well, the, I mean, they were looking at it a 4K screen and they had all four on there too. So I guess they must have been squashed down 25% yeah. to fit. So. I guess still it has to read all the files to squash them down, right? So, All right, before we move on to the next question, um, just so you know, um, I did buy my wife a 27-inch, <laughs> I think it's 27-inch iMac. So now the Apple is invading more and more into my household, which is good. I wanted to buy it anyway because you know, I'm coming up with a new course and I wanted to be able to do cross-platform type stuff like um, Final Cut X and Premiere as well. So the next question um, we kind of get into is uh, transitioning to like Premiere and if that's something that Matt really wants to do. So uh, like, go ahead and watch that part next. So, you know, I use Photoshop, so I'm you know reasonably familiar with Adobe. Adobe. Um, and a lot of people say that once you're, you know, becoming a professional video editor, most people somehow, whatever they start off on, they end up on Premiere. And so I'm thinking, should I just bite the bullet and learn it? And that way, you know, I'll probably keep my Mac laptop for travel because it's small and light and no moving parts and I can be a little bit rough with it. Um, and be able to use Premiere on that. And then when I'm at home, use a desktop which from the arguments I'm hearing from everyone is cheaper and much more upgradable than a Mac and they, have, they assure me you know if you set it up right it's just as stable and yada 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 and that that's basically my trade-off you know do I try and save a you know 20 percent or something but then I don't know like is it going to be two weeks of downtime trying to learn Premiere <laughs> that, to be honest, it's just not worth the savings to me. I'd rather just keep using what I know. But how did you find moving to it from Vegas? Um, it was different, but I, I do hear, and again, I'm not an Apple person, but I do hear going from Final Cut 7 to Premiere Pro um, is a very easy transition because of the way things get nested, the sequences and all that stuff. But Premiere was kind of a... I'm sorry, uh, Sony Vegas was pretty different. So the jump from Sony Vegas to Premiere took a little bit of time. But I want you to know how to ripple edit and cut and, you know, crossfades and do all this stuff, just the basic editing. And once you figure out the, you know, the, um, the, the shortcuts on your keyboard, um, you can cut really fast. It, you know, it, you're, you're, you're probably, your first project's going to go very slow. But after that, you know, no matter what you, you move on to. Because I'll, I'll, once I get a Mac, um, I will definitely um, definitely work with Final Cut X. Um, cause, and it sounds like it's a pretty easy one to learn, I would imagine. Um, so for you, um, did you said you were going from Final Cut 7 or Final Cut X? I'm on You'd X. Never, so you've never used 7? So uh, no, I don't there, know. There was one in between. I did use it, but I, uh, maybe only really briefly because I've been using X for most of the time and I didn't find it a struggle to change. <coughs> so I was quite surprised when you said some people left when X came out because, you know, all that kind of thing. You know, there's just controversy sometimes. As yeah. I find it oh, yeah. hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> and it dies away. You know, the, the iPhone 4 had a grip of death where you'd have no reception that was on every news network for a week and then just disappeared and final cut x was rubbish and oh now let's move back because i've got something that we're all calling a trash can whatever <laughs> 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 um so mm, the, the someone actually i've been getting some suggestions from viewers about optimizing a system and they actually have been referencing videos that you've put out which i have to be honest i haven't seen myself but they were saying that you have to think about what's your weakest link. So the specific example he gave was if you've got this amazing CPU, loads of RAM, a great GPU, but then your hard drives are shoddy, doesn't matter how fast you can render, they can't save it fast enough, so it's gonna be slow anyway. So what he was suggesting was building a PC, and I've, I've got the parts list there, but you know, all high spec stuff that seemed to work together well, but then having a bunch of SSDs in it, I think, it had four or five SSDs and one or two hard drives in it. So he was saying have 
one for your operating system, one for your scratch disk, one for your source files, one for output, and then so then they're only ever reading or writing. Right. And then once you've finally output your file, then I send it over to my RAID, you know, slower storage for long term right. use. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So what I've got, I when I first built it, I had like three or four drives, and now I got six drives in it. <laughs> so just like you said, I have an SSD for the operating system, SSD for the scratch, for the little tiny files that Premiere makes, like the audio files and some of the other things that are very tiny. Um, I have an SSD, one terabyte SSD for the working drive, what I call the working drive. Um, and then I have an actually a hard drive for my export when I go to export. And then I have two kind of uh, three terabyte drives. And those one is kind of like encapsulates all my media. So when I've done working on the my working drive, the working SSD, the one terabyte, things get moved to there. And then I have another one. Uh, three terabyte drive that basically just copies every night over. So I don't have a RAID, I don't have redundancy that way, but the type of projects that I work on, if you know, if something went wrong, uh, yeah, I might lose a day of work. So, you know, as I know this is not a really a backup discussion, but but for me, exactly what you said, you know, breaking it up so you don't have one drive trying to write and read at the exact same time and um, yeah, breaking them up into individuals, I think, works really well. And the SSD prices have come down so much. I mean, yeah. just for your scratch drive, your scratch SSD can be a tiny one. It doesn't have to be very big at all. The next part of the discussion we kind of talked about things that are kind of different between what's going on with Final Cut X and Premiere Pro. And again, I think we've said it, at least I think I tried to say it in this video, that we're both not computer experts um, you should definitely follow somebody like Linus Tech Tips because he knows what he's doing. But uh, here's a discussion about kind of the, the differences of what's going on in the background with Final Cut X compared to Premiere. So what might be happening with you, and, and again, I'm not a Apple expert here, but I understand with Final Cut, it pre-renders in the background, something that Premiere doesn't do. So if I'm not mistaken, while you're working, it's pre-rendering in the background. So when you go to export, that process becomes extremely fast. Yeah. yeah so so that, my guess is that's what's happening to you. It's pre-rendering in the background. It's just using gobbling up all those resources that would otherwise go to playback. I think that's exactly it. And it does um, when you tell when you start to work with it, it pauses those background things for you. And so I guess if it's optimized, that's cool that it does that. But so the as famously, Apple's flash storage is still quite expensive. So when I upgraded my laptop to a 512 gigabyte internal drive, that's not huge by today's standards, but it was a fairly big investment at the time for me to upgrade from the base one to that. But still, once I've got all my different things on there, if I brought in, say, I don't know, 60 gig of video files to edit, and then that, if it's doing that rendering in the background and I only have this one drive or I have, you know, Drobos and stuff, which are on Thunderbolt and it is quite fast transfer, um, if all of that rendering and all of, if, if I keep everything on the SSD, which is the fastest, well, one, it's reading, writing and talking 10 times to one drive, which can't be optimal, but it also just fills up my buddy hard drive like that. I'm always getting this message, your hard drive's almost full, should we stop working? Like all the time when I was wow. editing my last intimate portraiture series, I had to literally delete programs off my system Ooh. to make room because I, I, there was just nowhere to put all the stuff. And if you, you know, when I run it off the, the Drobo, my source files or whatever, or the render files, it just slows everything down so much. So is there another option? Could I be getting like external SSD drives to plug in and use as scratch disks? Again, I'm not an expert here, but I follow, I don't know if you know Chris Fenwick. Um, he's got a show, a podcast, and he um, he's a big Final Cut X uh, proponent. And what he uses is called the Pegasus system. I don't know anything about okay. it, but yeah, apparently that works really well for his his setup. Okay. Um, I don't know what exactly that is. It's a bunch of, it's, I'm sure it's just a raid of something. Yeah, it's the, but it must be the one that Apple supports because it's the one they sell online and in store. So I think it's, kind of the competition for Drobo, but it's, yeah, I don't know if the, I, I don't know either what's the difference between the two, but it's Thunderbolt and blah, blah, blah. If I am going to stick with Final Cut, then there's no choice. You know, I, I need to get that or I need to somehow set up my MacBook Pro. I should do that anyway in a more efficient way. So it's really 
making use of the you know the more SSDs. Um, uh, I guess it just it really depends if I want to um, learn Adobe, so I just need to give it a shot. I guess. Unless well, I guess my my question to you is: Do you do you go out to like? After Effects or Adobe Audition or, you know, because Adobe Audition I'm finding is just freaking amazing when it comes to dealing with audio, getting rid of like background noise and uh, getting rid of noise problems and stuff like that. It's an amazing audio editing device or software. So if you're not going out to After Effects or um, Cinema 4D or uh, Audition and you're staying just within your bubble, uh, and there's, uh, from my understand, there's tons of great um, third-party apps for Final Cut X. So you might just stay there. I don't know why you'd want to leave. But I mean, if you're not doing any heavy, complicated, you know, uh, special effects type stuff, you're probably fine where you're at. It feels complicated to me, but I think in the <laughs> spectrum of things, it's not. But um, yeah, the one thing I would like more of, and again, this is, I haven't looked into it. There probably, as you say, is so many solutions to it, but would be the, exactly that, the audio thing. I don't, for what I'm doing at the moment, there's not too much complicated stuff that I just, you know, but it's kind of like um, me driving in Sydney. If I've been somewhere three times, I know it and I don't need the GPS anymore, but there's suburbs that I've just never visited. So I think it's the same with um, Final Cut. I know what I need to know and I, well, I know what I do. But there may be a hundred features there and a thousand features I've never even thought of that would be fantastic to know. But, you know, what am I going to hire a tutor or something? Um, <laughs> but I really could use uh, the background noise removal. My studio is on a major road and I'll often have some traffic noise. And I do find Final Cut, uh, I could be just using it wrong, but I find it just kind of deadens everything. If you try and get rid of the background noise, you lose a lot of your... The, inflection in the voice as well so uh, do you know of any options that you can step out to from it to can it actually go to the adobe stuff or what within final cut x not that i know of but but when once you're in the and that's kind of the thing with adobe is once you've gotten to uh, experience the direct link of after effects or speed grade um it's it's just like a drug. It's like oh, I can't. Uh, I gotta have it. <laughs> That's why I stick with the pro Adobe. Is they got me because um, you can go out all these things and come back so quickly. So your workflow is just instantaneous. Whereas I would imagine, and again, I'm not an expert with Final Cut X. Is once if you want to go to After Effects, I think you're gonna have to build a composite. You can actually render out, then do your stuff, and then you've got to come bring it back in. Whereas uh, Adobe product, you don't have to do any rendering. You just go out and you you work on it, and it automatically gets pulled into your Premiere timeline. Mm -hmm. I think I need to have a little play with the software then, unfortunately. Um, so what, the all of those different step out options are they optional or they come with Premiere? Well, if you, you buy Creative Cloud, if you get the Creative Cloud, you get everything. You get Audition, uh, After Effects. Uh, speed grade, which I'm really loving. Um, I don't know if you know much about color grading applications, but you've got like other ones like uh, DaVinci Resolve, totally free. And it's, you know, what Hollywood movies, a lot of them are being used on is DaVinci Resolve, which is an amazing program. Of course, there's, uh, there's other, um, it's the free version is pretty much does everything except for, I think, noise reduction. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I've tried and I've done several projects with uh, uh, resolve and it's just a nightmare to get things in and out. It just takes so long to conform stuff. Your graphics don't come in right. Your titles don't come in right. And you're just like, ah, you're pulling your hair out. But with speed grade, it's like you say open speed grade and then it opens it up and you color grade and it's real time. They, they just fix something on, on the PC side where you can watch it in real time. Then you save your color correction and you say go back to Premiere and you open it up. It's all there. It's awesome. Uh, it's so fast. And, and uh, knowing your workflow, you need things to be fast. I mean, you've produced, what, uh, over a thousand videos on YouTube? you got to work fast. <laughs> True. And I'm, I don't get into that much color grading stuff, but I do have some bigger projects coming up in 2014 where, you know, I, I actually quite like that, to take on a project that's above what I know how to do because, you know, you just have to figure it out and then 
you know, you get your head around all that stuff as well. So yeah, a couple of guys who know what we know and we, you know, we met actually on uh, Frederick Van Johnson's TWIP uh, podcast and, you know, I just called him up to say, could you give me some advice? But if you're in the audience and you're an expert and you want to give some advice, I'm sure we'd both be interested to hear it and... You know, you just don't need to start the sentence with, oh, my God, these guys don't know what they're talking about because we <laughs> acknowledge that. That's why we're putting this out there. Well, not that we don't know what we're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, Dave, no, I, I, I'm, I'm technical uh, things beyond us. Listening to some of the other like colors that I've talked about, those guys know what they're talking about. I, I their knowledge levels up here. Let's say my mom's knowledge levels there, you know, <laughs> at the bottom. I'm probably somewhere in here, you know. I'm not at the top, but de- definitely. I'm having tea with your mom, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, getting into more into the Mac, which I, I really need to do anyway. I need to be on both platforms. In fact, my very first computer back in 1983 or four, we got one of the very first Mac um, Pluses, Mac Plus. I still have like a sticker from years ago, I had like multiple colors in it. So I started on Mac um, and now I just need to do both platforms. Kind of like what Matt's done. He's gone from just being a Nikon shooter to being both a Canon and Nikon shooter for the type of stuff that he's doing. So definitely follow Matt. Um, He's got some awesome content out there and that is pretty much it. Talk to you guys later, bye.